Hello everyone, so in this video I will show you how to use Keyrunner. Keyrunner is basically API client available both as a desktop app and a VS Code extension. So in this video, we will focus on the VS Code integration. With other API client, you need to log in just to make a simple API call, or you might hit paywall to access basic feature. But with Keyrunner, you can run requests without logging in and get unlimited collection run. And keeping your data local and secure and another great feature and that we are gonna cover in this video so let's just get started all right if you want to follow this tutorial just clone at this repository i'm going to put link on the description so let's do that i'm going to use hhh and i'm going to copy this url go to terminal and from here i'm going to say git clone and then paste that link hit enter after the cloning done you can see the to that folder and then we can open that inside Visual Studio Code. So now let's open the terminal and we can do npm install to install all the dependency on this code right here. After it's done, we can do npm start to run localhost 3000. And as you can see here, we get connected to SQLite database. Great. Let me show you the available route on this server. So let's go to roads and then item roads. As you can see, we can basically use this item to get all the items. We can use item slash ID and etc. So let's open the app.js and here that you can see we can use a slash API slash the road is going to be items. So we can use slash API slash items to get all the items. All right. So let's try to install the key runner. So on this extension search, I'm going to say key runner and let's install that. So this one, I'm going to click install. Great. Now you can see this icon right here. Click on that. This is the interface of the key runner extension on VS Code. I suggest you to just reload the VS Code after you install the key runner. All right, after the key runner installed, now let's try to make a really simple request. So let's go with new request. I'm going to use HTTP request. And here I'm going to run HTTP localhost 3000 and then slash API slash item. This is basically we'll get all the items. So let's try to hit submit. As you can see, we get all the data. Great, it means it works. But what I normally do is I like to set up everything and make it organized. So let's do that by create the workspace. So in here, I'm gonna create new workspace called, let's say demo workspace. And for the type, I'm gonna do local. So let's create workspace. All right, after you create the workspace, now you can select right here on the top. Great, so let's create environment. So let's go here, I'm gonna create a new environment called a demo. ENV. So let's create submit. And now as you can see, you can also select the environment and also select the workspace here. Nice. So now let's create collection. I'm going to click this plus icon. And then for the name of the collection, I'm going to do demo root like that. Click save. And from here, I'm going to add new requests. So for the title, I'm going to say get all items. For the URL, it's going to be localhost 3000 slash API slash items. Let's try to hit submit. As you can see, we get the ID 1 and ID 2 right here. If I control save, it will save that. Now, as you can see here, you get get all items title right here. Nice. So now let's duplicate this request. I'm going to click this three icon and then duplicate that. Let's click this and this is going to be get a single, let's say single item by id like that and let's try to get id1 for example let's try to submit as you can see we get the response great so we can save that and now as you can see it's updated on the left right here nice but as you can see here uh, basically for the local host 3000 i like to put that as an environment variable so let's just copy this link here the url go to environment variable click this one and I'm going to give a name, for example, a dev URL and just paste that value right here, save. So now we can copy that variable name, close this, and then we can just put that variable in here, just like that. So we can just copy this one, copy that, go to single request in here and paste that also right here. And this is also works by the way. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, we need to add four slash the front of the API. So let's try to submit and as you can see, it works. And also this one, it should be works. Nice. So let's try to duplicate the request again because we are going to make a post request. 
click that and then this is going to be a post request and for the title i'm gonna say create new item like that and for the url it's gonna be api slash items just like that and then what we are going to send on the body is let's go to row just make sure this is adjacent and then i'm gonna send a name name is going to be i want to say item three and also for the description i'm gonna say this is item three just like that so now let's save and hit submit as you can see this is successfully that means uh, we get let's go back to get all items now we should have three items right nice go back to create and then for example i don't want to send the name you will see the error as you can see the re response is 400 and we get name is required so now let's try to make a update so let's copy this one duplicate that and change the title into update and existing item for the url i'm going to change the maybe id3 and here i'm going to say item3 updated like that save and as you can see this is updated right here if i hit submit we get an error here we get this error that's because the request is post request but we send this three road of course it's not gonna be works so we need to change that to put request let's save and then hit submit as you can see it successfully let's try to get all now as you can see item three is updated great so let's try to create another request here i'm gonna give a name delete an item and for the url i'm going to delete for example three for the id and also make sure the request it should be delete request let's save and let's try to hit submit as you can see item deleted successfully if i get all the items now item 3 is gone nice we can also run the collection for example here as you can see we have demo root collection if i run all this collection we can do that with just one click as you can see you can change the order if you want and then down here you can set the iteration you can do two time or just a uh, single time it doesn't really matter and for the delay you can also change that to whatever you want this is basically on second so i'm going to do 100 second so let's try to run as you can see it's running and for the get all item it, we get 200 respond that means everything is okay on the get single by id we get okay but for the update existing item we get not found that's because basically we set that update the id3 and id3 is not access right and for the delete we also get the error it's just because id3 is not found because as you can see on delete item we set that as a id3 right here another feature is playground but first i want to see my all items here let's hit submit as you can see we have id1 id2 and id4 all right so let's go to uh, this create item here. It will create ID5, right? And also for the put right here, I'm going to change that to, uh, basically we need to change the ID4. Let's do for the body and I'm gonna change this to four maybe, all right? Item four updated. And also let me see for the delete, I'm going to delete uh, maybe one. All right, so now let's try to run the playground. So here's the playground, right? I'm gonna click that. And then the first thing is I'm going to get all items. Let's drag it right here. After I get all items, I want to create new items. After I create new items, I want to uh, just update the items. After that, I want to delete the items. All right, so let's just connecting like so. And then now let's, uh, I think I'm going to delete this one. All right, so let's run it. Everything works. As you can see, there's no red color in here. That means everything is clean and nice response. So let's go to respond here. And as you can see, everything works. Uh, for the, let me see, for the top right here, for the get all items, we get all the items, right? Two, four, and five and also for the create new item we have the item 5 right here right the id 5 i mean and for the update existing 
uh, item we get the response successfully as well and for the delete we get the item deleted successfully as well nice another thing that i'm going to show you is uh, this secret scanner feature and as you can see if i scan right now of course there's no issue because we don't put any api key or password on the request of course everything should be clean right now so the secret key is basically a feature to help you automatically detect sensitive data like uh, api keys tokens password and other credentials so let me show you how this is works i'm gonna close everything so let's try to use this the cat api so first you need to get your api key click uh, this get your api key just select the free version get free access and here you can put your email the random app description you can select the personal project and click this one and hit submit after you click submit just check your email and you will get your api key so let's click this documentation and now let's try to just make a request for a random image so i'm going to use this link right here let's create another collection called uh, i'm going to say the cap api click save and from here i'm going to create new request and then let's paste that right here and this is going to be let's say get random cat so let's try to send the api key from these headers here let's go back to documentation and we need to send this x api key copy that go right here and i'm going to copy and paste my api key on this value here let's try submit and as you can see we got the data right but as you can see, we just put the API key right here, not put that on the environment variable. So let's try to run this secret scanner. I'm going to run that, star scan. So as you can see, we get this error here. Let me open the workspace and collection. And then as you can see, the cat API is have one potential secret. And this is going to be this X API key. And this is the value right so to fix that of course we need to put the value on the environment variable let's go to environment select your demo environment right here and i'm going to put the value here and also the variable name i'm going to set uh, maybe cat api underscore key save and just make sure this is going to be long api key okay let's save and i'm going to copy the name of the variable and then let's try to make a new get request. I'm gonna put a value here. Let's just get rid of this and put that cat API key right here, save and hit submit. As you can see, we still get the data, all right? And also let's try to run the secret scanner again. And hopefully now everything should be fine. And as you can see, no potential secret and API key found. Great. So basically, there's a lot of another features in here, mock server and etc. So you can just play around with that. And hopefully this video helpful. See you guys on the next one.